I would relinquish infrared to the Communist Party if the party is actually serious about growing and becoming a party of the working class. Absolutely. I would we would be under their authority. Okay, so I'm gonna get to the relevant part. So the timestamp should be here. I'm just gonna get to the relevant part. Um I think it's around here. Anytime you go to anytime you see motherfuckers crusty as hell, the Rouge move ones are not the uh, shit in Los Angeles. That's why I see them regularly at every protest. You got the Revcom boys, and then you got the, uh, the what's his face? What's the other one? Fucking, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name. Those are, like, those are some of the fun, uh, the fun ones are, uh, the Revcom, uh, guys, and then the other fun ones are the, 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 uh, Lara, the LaRouche boys. So, Lara so if, if you don't know, Hassan has a very strange fixation on LaRouche and LaRouche, uh, the Schiller Institute and, and that whole thing. And he even has this cardboard thing up in the back to, like, troll LaRouche. I, I don't know, I, LaRouche. Because, you know, LaRouche pointed out the influence of the British on this country. I, I would love to see Hassan try and refute that. But um, Hassan kind of is traumatized by me because I proved that he doesn't know anything about Marxism. And it really actually did get to his head. That is measurable. Um, talked about it and referenced it on stream multiple times. And he came to the conclusion that he's going to explain away uh, infrared, and he's going to explain away this whole like new, you know, Marxist-Leninist resurgence as like a disguised form of Larouche, Larouchism, right? So that's his like, see, it's almost like the right-wing idea of cultural Marxism, right? It's like, oh, this is actually Larouche. Oz is just like a secret Laroucheite. And Larouche is the secret of the whole thing. When you know. Uh, the extent of our connections to the Schiller Institute are transparent. The extent of our appreciation for LaRouche's ideas are also transparent. We don't agree with LaRouche about everything, but he was actually a pretty smart guy who had a lot of interesting things to say. Yeah, same, same thing with Dugan, right? They also, sometimes they say we're Duganists. Sometimes, they, they just take their pick, right? In reality, we're Marxist-Leninists, pretty orthodox Marxist-Leninists. Um, by Western standards, we're heterodox, though, because... We don't have that dry dogmatism where we just recite, you know, slogans. We actually try to fill our minds with the treasures of mankind, as Lenin pointed out. So, you know, there's a coherence to our ideology that you can't say it's, oh, it's, it's just Dugan. <laughs> it's LaRouche. No, it's, there's, there's originality here, you know. But Hassan decided to cope his way out of confronting that originality by trying to explain it explain us away by like saying we're just LaRouche we're just that that's what we are we're the LaRoucheites right so continue right LaRoucheites uh, the Lyndon LaRouche movement some of them follow me actually too I rarely ever talk about them so I think I I don't know what he's I, th I think he's talking about me and Jackson I think he's talking about me and Jackson I'm not sure like who's he referencing is they just think this is like a good area to like uh maneuver in Lyndon LaRouche I think he's talking about my community, the infrared community, and he's still operating under the um, idea that we're secretly the Rushites. Or maybe he's talking about Pestomime, you know? <laughs> I mean, we do have LaRouche people in our community. Pestomime is one of the biggest ones, right? But I am not, um, I'm not a LaRoucheite. I'm a Marxist-Leninist. Just because I agree with LaRouche about a lot of stuff, and I appreciate the originality and intelligence of people like LaRouche. It doesn't mean I agree with them. I'm a, I'm a follower of them. If you want me to list some things, I would probably disagree with LaRouche about. There, there are some things I think about his view of history. I try to have a unique appreciation of the Asiatic mode of production. I don't know. I think LaRouche kind of calls that the oligarchical principle. I don't really think I agree with that. There's other stuff, you know. Uh, he described, during the 80s, he described... Um, Soviet Union. I mean, it was kind of justifiable because he was making the connection between Soviet revisionism and international social democracy and the socialist international and stuff, and that was all legitimate. But he did describe, you know, the kind of Russian mother cult in this really visceral way, and I don't really think I agree with it. I think kind of had a disdain for Russian mysticism. Russian mysticism is a huge part of what infrared is, if you couldn't tell already. So that's something I disagree with him about. Um, also, there's probably stuff in regards to political economy that there's probably going to be disagreements about, right? Uh, I just haven't developed those because I, I haven't done much work on the matter. But 
overall, I think he did come to an original and real insight and discovery, right? I think he did discover something. So I can appreciate that, right? He is part of the revolutionary American tradition. That's exactly what it is. He is. He's, he's part of the canon, right? If you're an American, LaRouche is a guy who... He's not someone you can ignore. He's not someone you can dismiss. You've got to acknowledge he, he was a, a pretty mighty thinker, right? I've talked about LaRouche before. Uh, also, another uh, cult leader, pretty much. I believe CPUSA has a lot of LaRouche people too in it. Uh so that's us. He's talking about now we know what he means by LaRouche Ice, he's talking about us, right? There's no one else he could be referring to. But uh in case you didn't know, LaRouche was not a cult figure. Hassan's just spreading misinformation. He does that a lot actually. He was called a cult figure because LaRouche was one of those few guys, those few few people who actually built a network and built an organization and built an institution that was not tied um, you know, to the billionaire ruling class. So anyone who's going to build an alternative institution that's not part of this establishment network, you know, of billionaires and all this fucking money, they're going to be accused of being a cult, right? Even Caleb, they're trying to accuse him of, of, of uh, having a cultish vibes and shit on Twitter and stuff, right? So it's like anybody who's building an independent organization of any kind that has no connection to the Rockefellers, Ford Foundation, the Soros Open Society, Academia, the Democratic Party, and, and the various institutions in between, they're going to be accused of running a cult because, you know, Amer I feel like Americans kind of think that organizations come out of the sky and out of thin air. Um, so they assume that all these organizations that exist and all these institutions that exist just fell out of the sky one day, when in reality they came from the fact that there's just so much money being poured into them by the ruling class and by the U.S. government. And when you're trying to build an organization from scratch, you are going to deal with, like, conflicts between the interest of individuals and the interest of the organization. You have to, right? And that's not a cult. That doesn't mean you're running a cult. It just means you're just building an organization. That's just not the same thing as a group of individuals, right? It's an organization. It's something that individuals have to know have a disciplined relation to in the same way that when you go to school when you work for the democrats you have a discipline where you're putting them over you over yourself because you respect them right but when when it's smaller on a smaller scale they're just going to call it a cult and that's how that kind of thing works um if i'm not mistaken like i've seen them um I i've seen people sell like larouche textbooks and stuff at cpusa right uh I so he's he's making that up um i can pretty much guarantee you that no one at the CPUSA has been selling LaRouche textbooks. The reason he's saying that is because he's trying to avoid admitting that he thinks that the CPUSA is full of LaRoucheites because of the proximity between infrared and the CPUSA. Now, there's a few things about this, right? The first thing is, that I think this is a big W. I think it's a big W that the CPUSA is publicly associated with infrared, and it's known for being an infrared group or an infrared-related group. So I think that's a big W already. If you haven't joined the CPUSA, join it already. Just listen to Hassan. Hassan is saying it's our, it's our party. So it's our fucking party. Even Hassan, in front of, in front of 35,000 people, Hassan said that this is our party. So join the fucking CPUSA. Even Hassan knows that it's ours, right? Even Hassan knows that CPUSA 2036 is a thing. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, he... he, he uh, First, he claims we're LaRoucheites, and then he's trying to justify the bit. Oh, yeah, I saw them selling LaRouche books. No, the CPUSA is not an organization that's going to be selling LaRouche books, okay? There's no way you can openly profess even admiration or respect for LaRouche in the CPUSA without being kicked out, as far as what I can guess, right? So this is a lie. I accidentally gave the LaRouche my email when I first moved to L LA. A lot of Pat Sox really into LaRouche. Yeah, the patriotic socialism is so fucking stupid. There you go. That's pretty much the bulk of the drama of what we're talking about. So Hassan calls patriotic socialism pretty stupid, except there's no such thing as patriotic socialism. There's socialist patriotism, which is part of what Marxism-Leninism is and has always been. Now, if Hassan wants to sit here and claim that Marxism-Leninism is fucking stupid, uh, he, he can try and die on that hill. That's fine. But Hassan, um, what is your ideology? De Demsoc 
with uh, radical leftist aesthetics. Uh, I think you have a retarded ideology, Hassan. I think you have a genuinely mentally retarded and failed ideology that has never succeeded anywhere. Marxism-Leninism has succeeded plenty, right? There was a time when 25% of the world's population was living under Marxist-Leninist patriotic socialist states. The accomplishments of the Soviet Union uh, are innumerable. The most powerful state in the world that is literally reshaping the global economy and by as a consequence global politics is china which is ruled by a marxist leninist party okay so for you to sit here and say stupid shit like hey, patriotic socialism sounds fucking stupid man um you're basically trying to say that marxism leninism as a whole is stupid because marxism leninism is inherently patriotic and has always been this is so much so mind you that even to this day the leadership of the cpusa professes to be patriotic. They say, yeah, we are patriotic. That's literally the default position in the CPUSA. The Radlibs who say we shouldn't be patriotic because of indigenous people, they're like a minority. The leadership, the central committee of the CPUSA, believes in socialist patriotism. Now, we have gotten the rap of, of being Pat Sox uh, for aesthetic and cultural reasons, because we're Maoists who are drawing from the rural you know, hinterlands of the American working class, as opposed to the urbanized, glasses-wearing, Hassan, you know, coastal elites who spit on this country, uh, spit on the people of this country, you know, and are basically an extension of the synthetic left, the, um, you know, the, the institutional, academic, NGO, uh, media complex. Hassan came from the Young Turks, uh, you know, which is itself funded by billionaires like that Kratzenberg guy or whoever. Um, the progressive network of the Young Turks is now fully in bed collaborates with the democratic establishment and likely co collaborates with u.s uh, intelligence agencies and various foundations and ngos um that are connected to the cia i mean so hassan is coming he was groomed from that media environment he, he came to twitch and there's a reason people like me get banned from twitch and people like hassan stay on twitch because he's not a threat to the establishment he's not a threat to the status quo i am and that's why they prop him up that's why he's the biggest political streamer on twitch because he was deliberately propped up by Twitch to be the face of Twitch politics, okay? This was so much so, if you don't believe me, and you think that the establishment are actually just neoliberal, uh, soft leftists, Destiny was a neoliberal, soft leftist. Destiny got banned. Destiny got banned because Twitch does not want people like Destiny to be the face of Twitch politics. Twitch, for whatever reason, wants democratic socialists who are aligned with AOC and the progressive movement to be the face of Twitch politics. Okay, there's a reason for that. The reason for that is because the actual elites are what are behind the progressive agenda. The progressive agenda doesn't have a basis in the working class. It has a basis in the avant-garde visions of the ruling capitalist class. The progressive agenda is the agenda of the ruling class. The only reason that the mainstream Democratic Party isn't all progressive is because not all of the mainstream of the Democratic Party can get on board with this agenda because it actually has constituents to answer to and these progressive ideas are not popular with the american people now i know people like hassan are going to oppose me no uh, universal health care and, and social security and, and all these paid benefits these are overwhelmingly popular policies but that's not what defines the progressive agenda now is it progressive agenda is a great deal more than that it's cultural in nature it's about the environmentalism and degrowth the reason democrats can't win in west virginia is because Joe Manchin, he defends the coal industry, right? And progressives were trying to run in West Virginia. They can't, right? Progressives were trying to uh, go against Joe Manchin because their green policies are not popular with the American working class. So if the Democratic Party were to fully adopt the green agenda, it would lose, right? So that's why you don't have everybody who's on board with it. But that is the ruling class agenda. It's not the ruling class that's getting in the way of the progressive agenda. It's the working class. The working class is the most anti-progressive bulwark in this country, which is why you've seen increasing rhetoric in the past, you know, half a decade about the problem of white males and the problem of, um, you know, all these rural MAGA supporters and deplorables in the South. Yeah, because this is the working class. Those are all euphemisms for the working class, which is the number one site of resistance against the progressive agenda. And the agenda of these forward-thinking progressive billionaires 
who have this very wide and sweeping agenda of social change to basically consolidate their monopolies and mold America in the vision of a like a dystopian fucking capitalist hellscape, the World Economic Forum, uh, and the Great Reset, yada, yada, yada. You all know about it, right, in Davos. That's what we're talking about. And Hassan is at the avant-garde of this shit, right? He thinks he's an anti-establishment rebel because he supported Bernie in the primaries. And Bernie seemed like he was positioned against those fake Democrat corporate donors. But, you know, Destiny was right when he pointed this out at the very least. And I'll admit at this time, I didn't even appreciate that fact as much as I should have in 2020. Although I did, I was leaning there, but I didn't really appreciate it that much. The only obstacle to Bernie's success in 2020 was himself. He was unpopular among the American people, objectively. He wasn't undermined by the establishment at all. Um, he was just not popular among... His, his ideas were not popular among the American people. They weren't. Maybe in 2016, he was undermined by the establishment. I can concede to that. But in 2020, no. He shot himself in the foot. So when Hassan is positioning himself and posturing as this like anti-establishment guy who's taking on the rich, he's wrong. Um, the avant-garde progressives, those are the guys that love Bernie, right? Those are the guys, oh, I secretly like Bernie. You can't openly support that shit because it's not popular among the, the working class. So only the elite of the elite can support the sweeping progressivism of people like Bernie, right? And the historical precedent for that is Fabian socialism. Fabian socialism never disappeared. It's never been more powerful than it is now. And it basically is an elitist, philanthropic socialism that Marx and Engels described in the Communist Manifesto as bourgeois socialism. So Fabian socialism comes from the elites, the, the most wealthy elite part of our society, Fabian socialism. And it's basically a way to, you know, consolidate uh, the monopolies against any competition. They want to squeeze out and destroy the small business owner and the working class that has, you know, an extra some extra capital that would allow them to, you know, form sites of resistance against the sweeping agenda of the bourgeoisie, culturally and institutionally speaking. And that is the rural people, right? The rural people are more independent because they're more, they're less institutionalized, right? Okay. Um, there's a similar group here in the UK who turned up the climate protest, not culty though, but still trying to hijack movements. You see a lot of that. Yeah. I love, I love patriotic socialists, dude. America totally is going to be like, oh man, we love, I'm just happy pets. Um, I think he's trying to imply that it's like improbable that, you know, Americans would ever get around to socialism because, oh, oh look at all the in ingrained anti-communism. But this just goes to show what like a superficial airheaded, like dumb fuck Hassan is. He's never been able to like um, muster any kind of um, intelligent analysis of anything. He's he's just the guy who thinks on the surface. He's he's always been a dumb fuck. Uh, you know, yeah, that's another thing I'll concede to Destiny. Hassan's always been a dumb fuck about almost every issue he's ever opened his mouth about, right? So he talks about patriotic socialism um, as being improbable because on the surface Americans are anti-communist. He doesn't even think to like penetrate the surface of like, okay, why are they anti-communist? What are some of the things Americans associate with socialism and communism and why? Maybe, maybe Americans wouldn't be so anti-communist, Hassan, if people like you stopped trying to represent what that was. Maybe if more people were like, maybe if the representatives of socialism were people more like me and less like people you and Bernie and AOC, the working class would be on board with socialism. You ever thought of that, Hassan? You ever thought of the fact that the meaning they're attaching to socialism is out of touch, pampered coastal elites who have absolutely no grasp or understanding of what the working class actually cares about, uh, of how to talk to the working class, how to gain their trust? They rightfully don't have your trust because they can clearly see that you're attached to the same establishment institutions and the same donor, you know, the same big money, right, that's positioned against them and their class interests, and they, they clearly see that just in terms of your language, just in terms of your discourse, just in terms of your political correctness and your cultural posturing, and you know, you're, you're kind of like metro, you know, airy-fairy LA fucking detached posturing and stance, right? Oh, you're, you're just some kind of fucking guy who's, uh, who's in the know. And if only everyone was as wise as Hassan, if only everybody was as attuned as Hassan is, 
The working class in America are just stupid. They're a bunch of hogs and chuds because they're not able to be as smart as Hassan is and arrive at the brilliant, enlightened insight of true socialism, right? That's what they expect us to believe. It's a, it's a crock of shit, right? Hassan, you have no one to blame for the unpopularity of socialism than yourself. It's people like you that make it unpopular. There's nothing inherently about this country that is anti-communist or anti-socialist. There's nothing inherent to the American working class that makes them negatively disposed to socialism and communism. It's the fact that socialists and communists are not even in tune with their own country that makes them unpopular. You're this globalist, elitist, coastal elitist, right? You're not even American. You're not in tune with the roots of this country, with the people of this country. You're not a part of this country. Why would socialism or communism that is foreign to this country and foreign to this country's traditions, why would, a, why would a presentation of that ideology that is foreign to this land ever gain popularity here? There's a reason why Marxism-Leninism says socialist in content, national in form. There's a reason why socialist patriotism is an indispensable facet and tenet of Marxist-Leninist ideology. Because Marxist-Leninists know that you will never be able to win in a country when you're acting like you're, you're foreign to that country, when you're acting like you don't belong to that country, you're not a part of that country. You have to make your socialism based on the country you live in. It's a basic part of Marxism-Leninism, right? Socks no longer call themselves MLs because they've never read a book? No. Yeah, that, that's completely made up. Um, we don't even call ourselves Pat Socks. We're just Marxist-Leninists. You called us Pat Socks, and you made that label up. We have nothing to do with it. We're just Marxist-Leninists. You decided to wake up one day and distinguish us by calling us Pat Socks because you know we're not part of your Ford Foundation, Soros, and Rockefeller Foundation left. We're not part of your fake left, your synthetic left. So you decided to um, create a title of exclusion called Patriotic Socialism. And now you're trying to lie and say that we don't call ourselves Marxist-Leninists and that we call ourselves Patriotic Socialists instead. You're living in a world of your own delusion where you just make things up to cope with reality better. There's not a single fucking thing that any of you guys say about us that's based in and, and has a, even a grain of truth in it. Every single thing you use to cope with your worldview and your ideology and the way we're kind of disturbing that and shaking that, the way you've coped with that thus far has been entirely reliant upon a web of lies. And these lies only serve to help you cope with this idea that, oh no, my worldview isn't all wrong. It's the Pat Sox. They're ridiculous. They don't even call themselves Marxist-Leninists anymore. Oh, they're fascists. Oh, at this point, this and that. I mean, you do this, all this shit, right? Because it is really traumatic for you to confront the fact that your entire worldview is a crock of shit. That is so traumatic for you. That is so impossible for you to fathom um, that you just have to make up lies about us, right? That's your way of coping with the world. No, brother, they've only read the book, which is the Bible and also the Constitution, and you're just fucking too stupid to understand it. <sighs> um, see, this is what I'm talking about. So you, you claim to be an American, Hassan, and you claim to want to bring socialism to America but you've just disrespected one of the two, I mean, like most sacred things in the heart of Americans and in the heart of the American working class. You've disrespected their Bible and you've disrespected our Constitution. You literally are complaining about how stupid they are that, oh, why aren't, why aren't they on board with socialism? You just disrespected two of the most important things to Americans as far as sources of legitimacy and meaning is concerned. Now, you may think the Bible is fucking stupid. I'm good luck with that. I mean, uh, the Bible has more wisdom and truth in it than any of the bullshit garbage from academia that forms the basis and worldview of, of your ideology. That's The Bible is the foundation of meaning in, in, in America. All meaning in America is derivative from that literary text, which, which is literally revelation. It represents an encounter with the way in which the word is formed, the way in which meaning is itself formed. All literature, all poetry, all art, ultimately is derivative from religion. Everyone knows that, right? Marx recognized that. Marx said that explicitly, by the way. So Marx had a respect and appreciation for the Bible that you seem like you don't, right? The Bible, I mean, when people came to this country, guys, and they weren't literate and they weren't educated, the Bible was all they had. People, that was what they would memorize and recite in their head. 
orally often because a lot of people couldn't even read, right? And the Bible was the bedrock of meaning. It was a bedrock of meaning in an island of uncertainty, confusion, and chaos. That was the Bible for Americans. It is the solid rock and foundation of this country. Yes, it is. Objectively, it is. I know we have a separation of church and state, but in terms of the civil society that formed America, the people that formed America, people came here only with their Bible. They, had, they knew nothing else. They understood nothing else. That was it. Everything that came after was derivative from that. You know, it's same thing is true for the European Enlightenment during the Middle Ages. Sorry, after the Middle Ages, where all they all normal peasant people had was their fucking Bible. That's how they made sense of their world and made sense of their reality. And that, to an extent, that is still true. So again, you're disrespecting the Bible and, and, and then complaining about why your socialism isn't popular in America. Maybe it's because you're an arrogant fuck who thinks you're smarter than people for valuing the Bible when you're not. You're just posturing as more enlightened and more educated you're a dumb fuck dude there's more wisdom in that bible than than probably any book you've read in your fucking life and, and you're talking about the constitution as well i mean that is the foundational document of our country and our state again you mock these things right and you sit here like some british fucking socialist fabian fuck and then bitch and whine and complain about this country's doomed, man. All the hogs and this this the You're a dumbass, dude. You're so full of fucking shit. I wrote my PhD thesis on entryism. We qualify such small groups as sex, but not in the religious sense. How about we enter into the fucking Democratic Party? But not with these guys. I was. I mean, yeah, he's, he's pretty much being explicit. Like, hey, let's enter the Democratic Party. Otherwise, you're, you're following a cult. So if you don't want to be in a cult, uh, you have to tail behind the Democratic Party. That's, that's why they put Hassan as the face of Twitch. And they ban people like me, by the way. Because he sheeps dog people into the Democratic Party. I create the embryo of alternatives, right? I bring them into the Communist Party. To, with the in express purpose of divorcing that party from the Democrats. So again, that's why they ban people like me. And that's why they have Hassan as the face of Twitch. Because he pretends to be this progressive. He pretends to be this leftist. In reality, he's just doing the work of the deep state and the ruling class for free, right? Or maybe it's not for free. He's clearly getting paid a lot of money. He's got that mansion in West Hollywood. Uh, you know, he's, he's going to brothels often, uh, which got raided for human trafficking, by the way. But that's fine, right? I was raised by RCP parents. Every birthday I received an Avakian book. Jesus Christ. I went to a protest Friday and there was 100% a Revcom guy or he was a cop. I don't know. <laughs> Same difference sometimes. He was trying to fight the crowd because we weren't smashing windows and starting fires. We're in CA. Like, where would that have just... Wouldn't that have just hurt the movement? Yeah. Yeah, you'll see. It's like it's like Black Bloc if Black Bloc was not defensive or directional in in an appropriate way in certain instances. Um, anywhere. I'm the problem is like they're the most deranged, right? So the fact that I just talked about them, the fact that I just talked about them means like, oh my god, my QRTs are gonna fucking light up. They're the some of the a lot of them are swerfs and turfs. So there's that too. It's just like it, that's how it works usually. All it takes is like one of these motherfuckers fucking get people they probably have gotten people from this community half the motherfuckers were like you're not leftist enough hassan fuck you you're fake those are the those are the fucking revcom boys um but yeah AOC i wonder how much of our community they're attributing to the the revcoms we have been i have never interacted with the rcp ever i don't think I, i've never interacted with them ever I, I don't think i've ever seen them in my chat i don't know any right Sounded the alarm about this for a long time some way not want to refuse to use our full power when they do we still have to hear who in the time between the league and these so this is the last part it's like right here that she has talked about also uh and i agree cpsa is getting back to our ml roots we don't allow entries freaks and we purge them when we find them yeah yeah the key word is when you find them you can't allow entries freaks when you don't know who's entering your party okay nice cope dude Nice uh, cope, but 35,000 people already associate the CPUSA with infrared, thanks to uh, Comrade Hassan here. So, you know, nice cope, and the key word is when you find us. By the way, it is not entirely clear that that's allowed, according to the National Committee, when these clubs are purging people because they find out they watch Haas. So that's going to cause some turmoil in the party. That That is not a legitimate basis for a club to purge a member, believe it or not. 
and I found that out myself, even though you guys should still practice Takiya, just don't, because it's not even relevant. Don't bring an infrared up. It's not, we're not practicing entryism. We're just saying it's not even relevant. You don't even have to bring infrared up because unless the national committee commits to a partnership with the infrared media platform to grow the party, there's no use to talking about infrared. Just focus on doing the work that will make you credible in their eyes. And by next year, we'll have delegates that can actually get people in the national committee that can forward this serious proposal to have a, a partnership uh, or, or if not a partnership, an integration of infrared into the party somehow, which would be this infrared project. It's very dear to me, right? So I would be literally relinquishing infrared to the Communist Party. But that is something I will consider and do as long as um, with the right conditions, right? I would do that. I would relinquish infrared to the Communist Party if the party is actually serious about growing and becoming a party of the working class. Absolutely. I would, we would be under their authority, right? As infrared. So, yeah. Still practice the key and stuff. So, yeah. Good luck. Uh, hopefully. Godspeed. That's not what I've seen so far, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. AOC is... That's not what I've seen so far. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Shut the fuck up, bitch.